All right, everyone, I am back. We have reached wherever Meteon is, and it is time to start exploring this area. So, uh, first we need to talk to Living Way here. Let's see what they have to say. I can't guarantee it will be of help in these strange surrounds, but I've readied a, pre uh, a provisions node in case of emergency. Of course, if you encounter any real danger here, I expect you to return to the Ragnarok uh, at once. Okay, so this is the provisions node. Let's see what it's got. Yeah, it doesn't have any new gear that's going to work for me because I need the higher quality stuff. Yeah, my my old 530 gear is better than than like the like the rings and such here. So, yeah, I'm hoping I pick up more gear along the way here at some point. Um I don't even have I've got like an earpiece, but this was from like way way back in everything here. It's not it's not going to do anything for me. So, let's speak to Alphano. We're fortunate this place can support life, albeit barely, I suspect, given the torpid steel quality of the air. But never mind that. We must find Thancred. Let us begin our search from the prow of the ship. It seems as good a direction as any. Try not to stray too far, lest we lose sight of one another. And it is not surprising that we are seeing dragons out here, given, you know, Midgor Sarmar came from the Dragon Star. In fact, let's go ahead and bring out Hadrid here and take one down. Oh, that's an A rank there. Alright, there's Alpha Note. Ruins, but of what, I wonder? Perhaps we can find something to help us understand the nature of this place. A relic, an inscription, anything. Look here. This part is relatively intact. The intricate design of the top suggested is man-made, though its builders were surely not men as we conceived of them. Having said that, I swear I have seen this pattern before. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is actually pretty obvious here. This is Omega's design. Uh, I believe this up here is the, uh, pattern. Uh, so, yeah! Or at least that's what I think I remember it being. I guess we'll see soon enough. The metallic pillar has been partially melted, likely some uh, sometime in the distant past. 
The damage does not appear to have been inflicted deliberately. Rather, it calls to mind the indiscriminate destruction often, often wrought in the heat of battle. Huh. Just a weird thought. What if this actually is the Dragon Star we're on right now? I mean, just the fact that there are dragons here to begin with kind of points that way. And we know that Omega attacked uh, at some point and basically chased Midgar Swimmer off. I thought this hill might afford a better view of our surroundings. A uh, poor decision in hindsight. Besides the light from the ship, all is shrouded in darkness. If Thancred is here, I'd never know it. From what I can tell, we are near the edge of an island, if you can call it that, surrounded by floating debris. No, I agree with you there. There's... There's definitely something off about this place, uh, if that is actually what's going on. No, if this... In that case, no, it wouldn't be the Dragon Star. This might be the home that Omega came from. Is why would this structure be here otherwise? Could be that these dragons took revenge instead. Were you able to find anything? As I feared, and still no trace of Thancred. There's nothing but emptiness as far as the eye can see, which unfortunately isn't very far. Though I can't help but suspect that someone or something is here. There are times when I sense it drawing close, and then a chill washes over me, leaving me exhausted. Leaving me with feelings of death and anguish. I think I might see something over there. What are you talking about? There's nothing there. Before we jump to any conclusions, perhaps we should search elsewhere. Agreed. We found only more questions when we are in desperate need of answers. There's a fair stretch of terrain from the ship's starboard we've yet to explore. Let us try searching there, then. Prince, a word, before we join the others. Alright, let's see what Estinian has to say.
You see them too, don't you? The dragons. As I thought, their presence is tenuous at best, but there's no mistaking it. No doubt your bond with Midgor Sormor and mine with Nidhogg is what allows us to perceive them. Ah, they can't even see him. Could these apparitions be related to the dragons that now live on Etheris? Bah, better to leave such conjecture to the others. In any case, we must be careful. We may soon find dragons they can see as well. Hmm, death and anguish. What happened to them, I wonder? All right, let's catch up with Alze. That appears to be an Aetherite there. Or some form of one, anyway. So now they can see him. What you see is a memory of a world that once was. A world suffering a slow death. Whose denizens cried out for the release of oblivion. What? Their world is dead? It is. Not a single life remains upon that husk floating in the vast emptiness. These creatures are shadow and shade, perpetuated only to suffuse dynamis with their unending lamentations. Our friend Sancred, where is he? A strange question. He is at your side, is he not? Oh, yes. He is here and there and everywhere within this space. He would tell you himself if he had form to form words. Huh. Such loathing and uncertainty. You don't know why you still exist. But it's Thancred already to come. Yeah, that would have been too soon already. In like manner to the oblivion I send. I tried to drown out your ether with dynamis. Beginning with this Thancred, who came at me despite being unable to breathe. Such a simple thing, unmaking men. In the blinking of an eye, he was gone. Didn't even have the chance to be transformed. Yet somehow, he managed to leave a slither of himself behind. What you call... the heart? Or perhaps the soul? In his final moment, he... cried out from it. A single word. Survive. <gasps> that wish proved stronger than the despair that ruled here. It overpowered it, causing this space to be remade. Into a place you can perceive, and where life can endure. 
That you draw breath is proof that his soul lives on. For how long, however, remains to be seen. So without his sacrifice, nobody would be alive. Well then, we should hurry and tend to business. Huh? It's futile. You will never reach the true me. I told you. Emotions dictate reality in this space. Such changes as you might work will not alter in its nature. You may see, but you cannot touch. Walk, but not advance. <laughs> Meteon holds too much sway here. How do we contend with a foe who can unmake us on a whim? I do not know. But Thancred gave his life that we might come this far. We must press on. Agreed. We cannot turn tail here. Not without something to show for our comrade's sacrifice. So Thancred is already gone then. I mean, in a way, it kind of makes sense, at least. His development as a character had kind of ended by the time they had left the first. I really, I'm really not sure what further character development he really could have had. Soul without body, a form of being with which we are not wholly unfamiliar. Indeed, for we existed in a similar state when residing in the first. The circumstances are rather more dire than that, tis true. I choose to believe he is not forever lost to us. Regardless, in sacrifice he hath afforded us a chance to prevail. Let us not squander it, and ascertain the nature of this realm, that we might confront and defeat Meteon. Estinian, Prince, would you accompany me in speaking with these dragons? Mayhap they can enlighten us. I would ask the rest of you to survey these surrounds. If there is a path that may lead us to our quarry, we must find it. Very well. We can reconvene here when everyone has finished. Mithion said these dragons are Shadow and Shade, from a world whose denizens sought oblivion. As such, they are not like to be amenable to company, let alone conversation. So please be careful. Let us split up and gather what knowledge we may. A visitor, not of this star. Could thy slender hands bring plague to our world? Thy breath extinguish life's feeble flame. Oh, how we would adore thee, alas. With time our flesh shall wither, our souls fade, and so we wait for its in inexorable march unto oblivion. If thou art not come to hasten our demise, I bid thee leave us. We crave not companionship, only silence.
beyond the distant veil. Paradise lost. So glorious, so beautiful. We were a proud and noble race, strength embodied. We knew only love before they came. Metal monstrosities of black and silver. No bonds of blood did they share. No conviction did they have to guide them. Yep. This is exactly what I'm talking about. We knew Midgar Sarmer had to flee his planet with the eggs of the first brood. And they came to... It's serious. A crushing defeat. Never had we known such shame. Still now are the winds, though none could fill these wings burdened by ignominy. We fly no more, only sink into oblivion. Thou wouldst bid me speak? <laughs> Folly. I observe the lesson of stone. I shall not fly, nor speak, nor roar. Only watch, and wait, and end. One sight yet stirreth my blood, tempteth me to raise my voice in lamentation. Am Noel, the cradle of unsung dragons. No words, no songs, are possessed of the weight to describe such tragedy. Go, if that be thy will, I shall remain. All right, we need to head north. Estinian. They led you here as well, did they? It was described to me as the source of their woes and proof of their end. I think I'm beginning to see why. The hatching ground, or was. I've seen similar on Aetheris. Midgore Swarmer's kind must once have lived and thrived in a place such as this. Vitra said his father was driven from their ancestral home by war and strife. This, then, is the fate of those who remained. Let us have a look around. Maybe these eggs have more to tell of what happened here. Inside the shattered egg, you find the remains of an unborn dragon. The body has already begun to decompose. The gelatinous half-dried membrane covering the corpse suggests it failed to emerge. The murky liquid has pooled inside the eggshell. The noxious filter is indicative of contamination. Gingerly lifting a large egg from the vicious mire, you peer inside and see a formless mass soaking in a pool of embryonic fluid. Your stomach turns as you return the egg to its resting place. Uh, Rooks, I never finished remake, so let's uh, let's let's hold off on that. Uh, this egg appears to have been broken from the inside out. Perhaps the dragonette within succeeded in hatching. What's this? I thought all the eggs had been ruined. If the dragonette was indeed hatched, there is no sign of it here. 
or its sire, for that matter. We should look for them. You start with the cliff tops, and I'll search the plains. That appears to be a different Dragonette. I hear that at least there are some others on whatever this place is. then something happened to this one as well. Boisterous howling hath been quieted by thy hand, I presume. Everything all right? I thought I heard a dragon or something resembling one. Ah, I see what's happened here. Was that your child? Perhaps. Some eggs within Amnol are indeed mine. If life within... One did quicken, the beast thou hast slain may be of my blood. Yet I do not recognize it, twisted and malformed as it is. Not a dragon in truth, but a reminder of our failure, a testament to our shame. Explain. They ascended from the he uh, descended from the heavens, cold, heartless machines, and with them rode war and death. With fire and fury, rage and rancor, we gave answer. Twas a long and bloody battle, but only the beginning. Untold chaos and destruction swept over the star. In the end, the invaders were victorious. Yet when they looked upon their prize, they deemed it unfit for requisition. 
we were abandoned to our ruin. The survivors sought to put away their shame, to rebuild a futile effort. In purest soil, replete with ether, did we once cultivate our nesting grounds, but our lands were barren, and any eggs nurtured in such desolation were fated to rot. What few survived to hatch emerge as abominations. We shall have no new progeny. Uh, proge progeny. That there are dragons among you capable of journeying to other stars. That there are. Many would make the attempt, each bearing a clutch of eggs. The richest stars were home to the harshest rulers, and the arrival of dragons incited contests for supremacy. When the fires faded, the wars lost and uh, lost and won. They too were reduced to ash and waste. Tis the curse of those who seek life, to be drawn into conflict, to conquer or be conquered. A vicious cycle we now choose to break, we tire of conflict, of everything. We wait now in sweet, merciful silence, free from strife and suffering, still as stone. Wait, your client, you claim your kind is doomed, but there is another star. Interesting use of the font there. They want only to brood in silence, to be left alone with their grief until time itself comes to an end. The sole reward for senseless bloodshed. A pain I understand, and wish that I did not. What fools we were. But now isn't the time for such thoughts. The others will want to hear what we've learned. Come. Actually, I could just teleport back there. Were you able to establish any meaningful contact with the dragons? The question I have at this point, though, is are they actually there or were they somehow created as part of Thancred's will to survive? I see. They wish to escape what they perceive to be a cycle of conflict. Thank you, Prince Estinian. As for our part, I believe we are more acutely aware of our confines than before. We started by traversing the perimeter of the island, to see there might be a path leading off of it. Sadly, there was none th nothing to be found. There's no small amount of debris floating about. Could there be enough to serve as a bridge to lead us elsewhere? I considered that. And so I tried throwing a stone onto a potential platform to judge its integrity. But it never reached its mark, as it crossed an, inv as it crossed an invisible threshold just beyond the boundaries of this island, it vanished, only to reappear above me and fall at my feet. I would not be too quick to presume that what we see outside this space is as it appears. Which is why I returned to the Ragnarok and asked the Luperates to search for a potential path. However, the ship's instruments failed to provide conclusive data on the surrounding area. Until we know more, I think it's too risky to attempt flying to another island. 
What Mikion told us before, that emotions dictate reality here, might be the key. But I'm not entirely sure what emotion might manifest a bridge to lead us to safety. So what you're saying is, we've no way forward. At present, I, If it is indeed emotion that governs this island, perhaps it is not Meteons, but the dragons that hold us here. A tire of conflict, and have chosen a path of oblivion to escape it. Or rather, they have chosen no path at all. Meaning there is no way for the dragons or anyone here on this island to advance. A sound theory, disheartening though it may be. If that is the case, what recourse do we have? They are not like to be persuaded to help us. Their reasoning is built on a history of turmoil and strife. Without irrefutable proof, the future is not as bleak as they believe it is. Mayhap persuasion is not the answer. Metion meant to unmake us then, and there, on the Ragnarok, and she would have succeeded if not for Thancred's determination. She concluded it was strong enough to overpower the despair that otherwise rules Ultima Thule, and reshape it to a degree. Perhaps it can be done again, in like manner, by overpowering the prevailing emotions. Twas Ultima Thule's architect, Meteon herself, against whom Thancred did pit himself in a clash of wills, though I marked no leader among them. As such, I did chance to encounter a dragon possessed of despair far more potent than most. Potent enough, mayhap, to dictate the course for others, and thus their domain to follow. He spoke but few words, carefully chosen. Their tone and timbre alone threatening to rend my heart in twain. Challenging his desire to remain may allow us to alter the island upon which we stand. Alas, I fear my vaunted rhetoric availed me not against his calcifying heart. But mayhap one of you will fare better. Then I shall guide thee. I'll end, they call him in the dragon tongue. Thou wilt find him nearby, eyes fixated upon the water. Well, what do we have to lose? Let's get going. We set off again. I don't even see that fate on my map here. Oh, actually, it was just because it was the uh, quest that was showing up there. He remaineth as he was when I first approached. Entombed in melancholy. I see. Perhaps I could... I'll handle this. So... Waiting to die like all the others, are you?
Our pride is crushed and our souls corrupted. The winds are stilled and the heavens offer no comfort. There is nothing left for our kind. Our long lives a curse as we await the end. Still as stone we shall become. So you say. Yet your kind has found a new beginning on our star. One of you braved the expanse, bearing with him a clutch of eggs. They and their children now rule our skies, their song heard by all. Our kin on another star. And yet, upon thee do I smell the blood of my brethren. Were they drawn into discord and war on their new home? They were. They suffered much, and repaid their suffering in kind. It mattereth not whither we fly. Ever will a sanguine ocean will await us, ever will retribution's wheel turn. And so on the last of my pride as a dragon, I break free of this wheel. I renounce conflict, exile myself from the other, never again to be touched by the flames of hatred. Had your brethren made the selfsame choice, my family might still be alive. Yet lasting peace does not come to those who simply retreat from conflict. No, you must be willing to confront it. To stare into the face of your foe, and see yourself in him. Only then can you break the cycle of torment and tragedy. This lesson, a dear friend taught me at the risk of his life. There is no nobility in your penance. You wallow in self-pity. And after everything we've endured, we will not let you stop us. Estinian! Stay back! That was medium, wasn't it?
And now we've lost Astinian. No! Not Astinian too! There's a wind! He's opened the way for us. Sacrificed himself to remake this place, like Thancred did. <laughs> oh, Alphano. <sighs> Come. Let us follow the wind. It will not lead us astray. He would not. In a way, Astinian was sort of in the same boat as Thancred. How much more story development could they have given him? But now the question is, how many more are we going to lose before this is over? And will there be a way to bring him back? And what is the lookout point doing here? I'm sorry, but that thing kind of ruined the moment there. Look there, the wind. This is Astinian's doing, I'm sure of it. We should ride its flow and see where it leads. Powerful Gale has delivered you to another island. The other scions should be should arrive before long. He he did it. He found a way forward for us. Dragons remain trapped within a prison of their own making, lamenting the horrors of war. Yet Estinian knew them better than most. He was a man of he was a man of honor, and a dear friend, willing to fight to the very end for what he believed was right. And he's still fighting, Alphano, just like Thancred. Their sacrifices are why we can survive here. Why we still have a chance to stop her. Even in spirit, they're unwilling to give in to despair, and we mustn't either. Alice is right. We must press on for their sake.
Wow, the, the font is going even crazier here. As Justola and Alice said, we must continue. Hmm. Notice the change in our surroundings? Perhaps this is the memory of an altogether different world. It would be prudent to learn more of it, then. Tread carefully, lest we lose our footing in the sand. Were it not for the violet crystal embedded in its surface, it would appear as ordinary stone. A curious script hath been etched upon them. Alas, it is not a language with which I am familiar. I cannot say I recognize it either. Nor I. The dragons, from what I recall, preserve their knowledge in song and eschew the written word entirely. So we may assume this is the work of another race, one we have yet to encounter. Metion claimed the dragon's world suffered a slow death, seeking the release of oblivion. What life we find here, like as not, doth wend its way toward a similar end. What do you suppose that is over there? I'm not sure. It's hard to make out at this distance, but it seems but the surface seems to bear the same crystals as this monument. Meaning there's a chance we may find whoever built them both. We should go and have a look. Come on. Hail, travelers. This is a most unexpected occurrence. Oh, um, hello there. Is this your home? It is, indeed it is. Ah, uh, forgive me, I had forgotten. An, an exchange of introductions is expected when first meeting with those with whom one is unacquainted. When the vibration of vocal folds was still required to convey our thoughts and intention, Ea, I believe, was the pronunciation used when referring to our people. Though it is not entirely applicable, given our present state, you are welcome to use this appellation. As for a nomenclature to address my individual person, I believe it would be pronounced kof -kug. Yes, Kof Kug. We have encountered beings that communicate intermittently through thought, but never one that is wholly without voice. I presume we are having this conversation via the medium of ether, or dynamis, as this space is suffused with vast quantities of it. Fascinating in either case. I gather your response to my presence is positive, then. That is well, for there is something I wish to ask of you. I would agree with you there, Rooks. Uh, Oriange, I would say, is definitely at risk right now. Like yourselves, we Ea are Aether-based life forms. Therefore, 
it may be surmised that your bodies are comparable are of comparable biological composition to those we once possessed. I have a number of queries regarding your subjective perception of the five senses, sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. In total, I have prepared 198,712,180,827. That is a... that's rather a lot, isn't it? Ah, my apologies. I have omitted a great many details necessary to understand the nature of my request. Though we dispensed with our corporeal vessels long ago, we have rediscovered a need for the flesh, and have endeavored to recreate our erstwhile forms. However, all pertinent records have been lost due to the passage of time. Take, for example, the nervous system. It is well within our power to recreate, but we have no frame of reference for sensations once experienced by our people, which may compromise our ability to interact with our physical environment. And the reason you need to regain corporeal forms? Why, to bring an end to our existence, of course. Though need is perhaps too strong a word, it would be a simple matter to unmake ourselves through use of etheric exogenators, but such a death seems inadequate. The traditionalists among us believe proper death requires an inescapable sense of impermanence in one's final moments, an experience found only with bodies of flesh. We should very much like to hear more of your plans. In exchange, we will answer any questions you have to the, to the best of your ability. Hmm. Such an exchange of information would indeed prove useful. Very well. To ensure efficacious exchange, I hereby invite you to our home. Yes, the abode of the Ea, where we traditionalists prepare for our demise. I presume your consent to answer questions is indicative of a tacit approval of our plans, in which case your cooperation is greatly appreciated. I must caution you, however, to be mindful of the Ea wandering the desert. Their desire for bodies of flesh could be described as overzealous. Now, if you would follow me. This is going rather smoothly. Not that I'm complaining, mine. Even so, we mustn't forget their aim is oblivion, much like the dragons. Though I fail to see why a civilization so seemingly advanced would choose to unmake all they have created. At any rate, we will find no answers dallying here. Let us be on our way. Here's we have arrived. Welcome to our abode. Most of our compeers you will find remain idle in their domiciles. Though your quizzical expressions indicate my phrasing is unclear. I speak, of course, of the violet crystalline constructs hanging from the stone structures there. You say they remain idle. But what of your work to regain corporeal bodies? An astute question, and understandable given your finite nature. We have no desire to pursue our research, for it is no longer necessary. If, in our idleness, we are struck by sudden inspiration, we rise to pursue said inspiration to its conclusion. That is why I was present for your arrival, and why I continue to gauge with you still. 
but while the others are not currently in a motile state, rest assured they will not they would not object were you to disturb their respite. You need only cast your thoughts towards one of their crystalline domiciles to communicate. All right then. Cast your thoughts towards the crystalline domicile, but there is no response. You... you wish to speak? Very well. Pray a moment, if you would. Why we seek our end, you ask. If you wish to know, I will tell you. Just a moment, I must remember. What form did I take when last I emerged? Alright, let's attune to the Aetherite here. Strange moaning comes and goes, but soon fades into silence. I can't say I've encountered anything like these little guys before, but I have uh, run into those creatures that have those plateless, uh, those, like, those discs that form their bodies. Did your inquiries yield satisfactory responses? I see. If they fail to answer, then it is likely because their minds have unraveled due to prolonged idleness. They are not but concentrated ether now. Worry not. There are no others who have need of those, of those lodgings. And they will not prove a hindrance to remain as they are. But more importantly, you said some few did answer your request for an audience, yes? I imagine they will be with us ere long. had no luck, but everyone else fared well enough. Quite a few Aya have awakened. Ah, there they are. May I introduce you to La Lac du Dic and Nednigd. It has been too long, Kofkult. I dare say Seder 4 has since completed an orbit. Indeed, until the travelers brought it to my attention, I hadn't noticed how unraveled some had become. Travelers? Ah, of course, of course. The ones who wish to know why we seek to regain corporeal forms. 
the truth of the matter is as plain to see as the neighboring systems, but my single account would fail to satisfy the requirement for scientific objectivity. Thus did I bid them awaken you. Am I the only one who struggles to tell who is speaking? Nay, thou art not. In the absence of corporeal forms and the divergence they afford, mayhap such similarity in voice is unavoidable. By the way, Kofkud, have you already observed the requisite custom for the travelers? That which one is expected to do when receiving guests? A matter of proper form? Ah, yes. So long has it been. It had completely escaped my mind, and still does. What was it again? I can't seem to remember. Neither do I. Pity, I was hoping you would. Perhaps we can search the archives for the answer. Come now, Nenig. The archives have long been frozen. Lest we subject ourselves to further dolor. Surely you recall that much. Ah, of course, food. The custom is to serve food. Beings of flesh such as they must regular, regularly replenish their ether. By contributing to their replenishment, we communicate our friendly intention. That's right, that's right. We duly invite you to join us in communal repast, after which we may engage in leisurely discussion. If we have a chance to learn something, then I see no reason to decline. Excellent. If you would care to follow, we shall feast you on the purest ether. Alright, let's see about this ether then. This facility is where we replenish our ether. There is no particular name for it, but we traditionalists sometimes use the word restaurant. Now then, if you would take your place with your comrades, the space will soon be awash with purest ether. Please absorb as much as you like. Okay. Brace yourself for a rush of sweet, sweet ether, but nothing seems to happen. Perhaps you need to wait a little longer. You brace yourself again, but nothing seems to happen. Just as I suspected, as meticulously as one might recreate the Ea's home world, this is Ultima Thule. One cannot simply generate ether here. As recreations, our friends are oblivious to this fact. To the very truth of their existence, much like the, phant the phantoms of the recreated Amaron. However appearances may seem, we must ever be mindful that it is the memories of the dead with whom we deal. So, did you have your fill of ether? Alas, we couldn't absorb it. A deficiency in our forms, it would seem. Oh, how very unfortunate. May I ask how you normally replenish your ether? Through your mouths, you say? How very primitive and quaint! To think that their mouths serve not only to expel sound, but draw in sustenance besides. Such life forms have long since vanished from our systems. Though we regrettably could not partake of your magnificent feast, rest assured we feel your, your welcome most keenly. In the course of acquainting ourselves with your sophisticated ways, however, 
we could not fail but wonder, wherefore do you wish to obtain vessels of flesh, and thence to vanish? Will you not favor us with an explanation? You flesh and blood beings are always so hasty. It does have its charm, however. Very well, we shall indulge you. In the beginning, when the Ea yet possessed corporeal bodies, our ancestors dedicated themselves to the purest of knowledge and technological advancement. By transcending all limitations, we believed we would eliminate sorrow and abide in true happiness. From the tangible, such as land, to intangible, such as labor, there exist myriad hindrances to progress. But the most confining of all was the flesh itself. Our natural lifespan was distressingly middling, you see. Too short to enjoy unhurried lives, yet too long to be considered disposable. Furthermore, to simply maintain the integrity of our bodies demanded considerable resources. What we managed to solve this problem. After long years, we discovered how to become non-corporeal entities with everlasting lives untroubled by the failures of the flesh. Thus, change, we had more time and freedom to continue our scientific per pursuits. We went on to make ever greater strides in our quest to transcend all limitations until we finally decided to challenge the last of them all, the limit of knowledge. That is to say, deciphering the laws of creation. We sought to discover how the universe came into being and explain all extant phenomena, and thence predict the future. If we could but achieve this, we believed that we would be free from uncertainty and anxiety. And did you mind? Uh, did you find the answers you sought? Yes, we did. Our efforts revealed to us a fundamental truth. Knowledge of said truth is essential for the continuation of our conversation. If you would, if you would learn more, we will share it with you. No, we mustn't. Primitive as they are, it would be unspeaka unspeakably cruel to deprive them of their ignorance. They are possessed of corporeal forms, their lives readily ended. As those who have gone before, is it not our duty to warn them? What thinkest thou? We have deliberated and come to a consensus. If you are resolved to know it, we will disclose to you the truth we discovered, the truth of the universe. Seek us at the stone pillars just outside the, bond, the bounds of the abode, a place called Elegia. fundamental truth. We will hear it, of course. Let us learn what has led such an enlightened people to this indolent end. Ere we join the Aya, there is one trifling matter I would fain investigate. Prince Grahatia, might I trouble you for your assistance? But of course. My thanks. We shall head outside the abode, if you would kindly follow me. I know not what mischief you are plotting, Ranger, but I trust you have our best interests at heart. The rest of us shall go on to Elysia. Lest you worry, we won't start without you. Uh, 
Uh, back to the west, it looks like we need to head. This whole place does seem to be themed around introspection and such. Aye, this place shall serve. Is it the spring that you wish to investigate? Pray forgive me, my friends, but there is not to investigate. It was but a pretense to speak in private. You have our undivided attention. As we have established here in Ultima Thule, these denizens of ruined stars are recreated in their twilight days. Yet one question doth arise in my mind. So faithfully formed are the simulacra. They believe themselves yet amongst the living. How dost thou suppose this is possible? Metion made contact with them while they still lived. We know that did happen on some worlds. Of course. She must have visited the stars of the dragons and the Aea before either race perished in their entirety. Thus could she make their emotions her own, and with them create more faithful simulacra than had she relied on any historical account. So too did I theorize and, upon the assumption, consider how those two races may have met their demise. According to thine own tale, Mithion perceiveth the emotions of those nearby as her own. A heightened sense of empathy intrinsic to her nature as an elenteki, uh, as an entelechi. In the course of her starfaring journey, if she encountered beings who strongly desired a cessation of their existence, she would be powerless before that desire. Even as she possesseth the power to grant it, the power of Dynamis, tis my supposition that, overwhelmed by their longing for death, Metion did unleash I... Dynamis and ushered the dragons and the Aea unto their doom. Of course, such was not always the outcome. Full many stars did she find already lost to ruin. In order to create a terminus, however, the fervent desire for the end is essential. Therefore, should you struggle to find the way forward, pray ask yourselves this. In the place where you stand, whose is the soul that yearneth most desperately for oblivion? Why do you tell us this now? He's going to make the next sacrifice. There again would I betray your trust. This pledge I did make to my comrades. In bringing thee into my confidence, I would remain true to my word.
As for thee, let us consider it my fitting reward for the secrets I harbored for the Crystal Exarch. I once placed my faith in thy chosen path, walking at thy sh at walking at thy side, full knowing that we were bound for thy demise. I ask now that thou returnest the favor, and abide in faith as I fulfill mine own destiny. If you say my debt has come due, how am I to refuse? Tis indelicate of me, I know full well, and I can but beg thy forgiveness. Yet even if I must needs go to such length, I cannot well feign ignorance of the answer I have found within. The answer to the question, in what moment might I stand strongest? After all that we've been through, I will say only this. Do what you must. Do what you must and see your conviction through. I shall, my friend. I shall. Without further ado then, let us go join our comrades. Yeah, we'll see if Yashtola beats him to it or not. Let us be off too, to it, to Elegia. Seems everyone is accounted for, shall we then? Please continue. Tell us about this truth you discovered. Very well. Bear in mind, however, that the purpose of this conversation is not to impart scholarly knowledge, for such requires that you comprehend the subject matter which you will not. We will forego the intricacies of our scientific methodology and deal only with the conclusion, the end of our society and our world. We acknowledge, with regret, that your star is in the midst of the same panic-induced cataclysm that befell Denet III. As such, in order to avoid causing undue distress, we will refrain from explicitly stating how much time you have remaining. You are entirely too kind. I pray you recount your tale as you see fit. In the beginning, the universe was but a tiny particle. Then suddenly, this particle began to expand. Having remained entirely in the bounds of your star, the phenomenon may be difficult for your kind to grasp. But this expansion has since continued unabated I just did a quick search. Apparently, Deneb is a star in the constellation of Cygnus. So, that seems to lend even more credence to the idea that Ethereus may be in some way related to Earth. 
which has always been suspected given the formation of the continents on the world. Anyway, continuing on. Speculating that the universe could not grow indefinitely, we sought to learn what might occur and made a worrying discovery. Well, if we're dealing with the same laws of everything, then one of two possibilities. Either the entire universe is going to collapse back in on itself, or eventually all galactic clusters are going to disperse, uh, resulting in a, uh, in a heat death of the universe. The stars will continue to spread apart, as will their finite thermal energies. Eventually, all heavenly bodies will grow cold and freeze. No new stars will be born. And the universe will enter onto an eternal ice age. So they went with the ladder then. In hopes of proving that this determination was erroneous, we scrutinized our research from all angles, even as we sought to avert the everlasting winter. The endeavor proved fruitless. So infamously so, in fact, that it became synonymous with vain effort. The universe as we know it would end. And there is no way to prevent it. Beneath the weight of this knowledge, our society stagnated. Though we had time still, it was a cold comfort. So they ended up looking so far into the future if, that they forgot about the joys of just a normal life and the fact that they would not see it in their own time. Why strive for anything when desolation is assured? When our wealth of wisdom accumulated since the dawning of our kind would be forever lost. No civilization would rise from our ashes. No scholar recover our knowledge. In silence unbroken, naught would stir. Intellect was once our pride. Overnight it became our shame. Our works, monuments to futility. Immortality, our greatest invention, became a source of suffering. Rather than suffer on, many chose to unmake themselves by means of etheric exsanguinators. Etched upon these stones are the testaments of such souls. Though many left no words at all, thinking it a pointless gesture. Once we have obtained vessels of flesh, we likewise intend to vanish. To a degree, I have to wonder if it would even be possible to, at some point, change the universal gravity... Uh, the universal... Uh... What am I trying to say here? The universal constant for how celestial bodies uh, attract to each other. And I realize what I'm saying would take an, enorm uh, an enormous amount of power probably generated throughout different points in the universe to make even such a thing possible, but it could at least allow the growth of the universe to perhaps not get so far out and if you know if necessary at some point if things start to get too close to each other then you know push it back the other way and to your point Rooks, yeah I mean there are par parallel universes as well uh, that could potentially be in play a 
If you understand this, understand aught of our tale, you will abandon your quest for knowledge. Ignorance truly is bliss. If you would cling to your illusory happiness, remain primitive and pure. It is the only way. <sighs> so that's your story. While I appreciate your advice, I will not heed it. Convinced though you may be of this truth, it is yours and not mine. Indeed, truth, I have ever believed, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you suggesting that we have reached a faulty conclusion? That our science failed us? Hardly. As you yourself said, the subject matter is beyond my comprehension. And that, I accept, is true. I do not possess the knowledge to prove or disprove your conclusion. In my mortal years, I doubt I could even approach the wisdom of the air. But of one thing am I absolutely certain. I would not be happier in ignorance. You stole a no! You mustn't! Here we go then. The most important lesson I've learned is that learning isn't simply passing one's eyes over words. Nay, <laughs> it is when understood for oneself that knowledge attains its true value. This is what has sustained me, driven me onward in joy and wonder, in anger and sorrow. The universe may end, and all may be for naught, but I will live as I always have. I will always seek out new knowledge, and no conclusion of yours, no matter how grim, can dampen my desire. I suppose it is only to be expected. Their feeble minds cannot fathom the terrifying gravity of it all. But worry not. We consider it our duty to enlighten you. And we will not stop until you grasp the full extent of our despair. That's the one with the tracking device. Keep calm and listen well. Though my body will soon dissipate, there may be a way to restore it. Asm's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. But you mustn't, for it would mean losing our way forward. This I only reveal so that you can promise not to invoke the magic. We came here knowing what victory may cost, so press on. Press on, and do not look back. Only once things are done, then. I shall join thee. As subterfuge is not required, thou shalt not suffer for mine absence. Ariange! My resolve hath never been as strong as thine. Full oft have I wavered in my decisions, and afterwards been stricken with regret. In spite of this, I may still stand with my comrades, supporting them as they attempt the greatest of feats. This truth I have learned in the course of our journey. And many though my shortcomings may be, I may also claim to excel in prophecies. My studies, into which have granted me the flexibility of mind needed to bend this malleable reality.
I don't know. Uh, to me... I don't know. I, I really don't know. It... It could simply be that... They wish to impart the knowledge to... Have everybody just end up dead. And so they don't have to worry about the end. Of course, the question becomes, why hasn't, if this is such a truth, why hasn't Meteon done something to themselves by now? Well, sh she basically was a child, don't forget. She was created um, by Hermes. Uh, and she definitely was of a what seemed to be a fairly young age. So, we don't know how long she really had been in, uh, in that, uh, how long she had existed in, uh, in that place. Thus shall I hope that thou mayest have the strength to resist, and our comrades the strength to continue. But at the same point, you, you also bring up a good point. The, the fact that she wants to spread this knowledge when really the other races were just sort of content to just accept and meet their end without really spreading the knowledge around. Or just didn't want to bother anybody as they left. With you to urge us on, how could we possibly fail? And now there are four. What's this? An extinguished civilization? Rekindled? That's right! Our quest doesn't end here! We'll press on! And we will find you! There. That's where you'll find me. Is that... another star? Of the stars we visited, most were already devoid of life. And where there was life still, the inhabitants wished for death. But even death, we learned, isn't truly the end. It is but a part of the cycle of rebirth. Souls return to the star, or in its absence, a larger flow, and eventually they are reborn. Alive again, to know suffering anew. True salvation lies not in dying. It lies in not being born. This is the gift I would give to you. To all life on beautiful Atheris. To that end, we created an egg wherein life cannot quicken. That dead sun. Attain it if you can before your friend's emotions fade away, along with their protection.
I'm sure a lot of players are going to be upset that they've lost their waifu. Are you all ready to continue on? Then let us make for where that light shone. Yustola and Orange have opened the way for us. like some kind of teleporter, maybe. Yes, I can feel it. The Aether emanating from the arcane pattern. This is a portal, and no mistake. Let us see where it leads. Now this looks Omega-like. Amazing. Yet another civilization. Attacked as soon as you arrived. Not the most welcoming of places, is it? We must try to find denizens who are amenable to conversation. We should also get the lay of the land and see how far we can go. I'll help Alpha know with that. In the meantime, you and Graha search for friendlier folk. Apart from hostile beings, take care with your footing. I mislike the look of this terrain. Not knowing what the locals are like, you'd best take care of yourselves. We'll find you once we've finished exploring. I expect the twins will seek the outermost bounds of the Isles, so I propose we search the central area. There are machines patrolling here and there, sentinels in all likelihood. Like those you encountered, they will most certainly attack any who venture too close. So let us avoid them and look for the others that uh, look for others that appear more approachable.
You see not but patrolling machines in this area. They do not seem inclined to nonviolent intercourse. Alright, another Aetherite. And what do we have here? An error has occurred in the trading protocol. Debugging in process. Please stand by. Alright, so we need to go further before we can trade there. And you've got basically the same stuff that was on the ship. Look, Prince, the machines here do not appear hostile. Let's see if we can communicate with them. Begging your pardon, we are searching for the denizens of this star. The unknown life forms detected, assigning generic label, interplanetary travelers. Greetings and welcome to the planet. The planet? What? Could you please repeat that? It appears your hearing organ is unable to process the name in our tongue. It may be translated into yours as Alphatron. Our people, meanwhile, are called the Omicrons, and you stand within one of our outposts. The Omicrons, you say? And what is it that you do here? We are preparing for war. As we presently do not have a designated target, you have nothing to fear. Should your star become designated, however, you will be taken into custody and or terminated. Not a little frightening, these Omicrons, but at least they seem to be forthright. I will see what else I can learn from this fellow, if you could try speaking with the others. Greetings, Traveler. When venturing outside the outpost, beware malfunctioning units. They do not heed Sir's commands and indiscriminately attack all non-Omicrons. For, for the avoidance of confusion, be advised that Sir is the alias of Stigma-1. Sir issues instructions to our forces as the foremost of the six strategic matrices that bear the designation Sigma. Measuring combat capability, result negligible, subject falls outside targeting parameters. Greetings, Traveler. We are the Omicrons, and our objective is self-enhancement. In order to achieve this, we venture forth in conquest to acquire combat data and resources. Most recently, we succeeded in subjugating the home world of the beings whose strength was said to be without parallel, the dragons. Yet though the ev Endeavor yielded a wealth of combat data. The star was rendered barren and unable to yield resources. A subsequent coding, costing, determined that the losses incurred exceeded the gains. So these are the guys that built Omega. Autonomous weapon deployment complete. Vanguard armament upgrade complete. Munition level satisfactory. Combat readiness assessment nominal. Awaiting instructions from Sir. Maintaining state of combat readiness. Alright, back to Graha. You learned a few things? So did I. 
or we share our findings. However, I believe it best to step outside the post. Come with me. Ah, there you are. We've finished surveying the area. This will come as no surprise, but there is no way forward. There were portals like the one we used to get here, but those that worked only sent us to isolated aisles. Then as before, we must locate the embodiment of the emotion that bars the way. What of yourselves? Did you find anyone to speak with? So the Omicrons seek to advance themselves through conquest. Following their victory over the dragons, they stand ready for the next campaign, but their leader has yet to issue new commands, and so they wait. In such a place, who could it be that fits Orianger's description? A soul whose yearning for oblivion surpasses all others. Orianger said this? During our investigation, before we joined you in El in Elegia, that's the way of it. Why couldn't he just say it to all of us? Given what we know of this place, it's certainly a curious state of affairs. While the dragons and the Aea long for death, the Omicrons long for conflict. As much as that may lead to destruction, it must be considered a distinct desire. In order to find the source of their uh, of the dominant emotion, I believe we should seek out their leader, this sir. According to M032, the first Omicron with whom we spoke, there is a console by which we might communicate with it. M032 also added that it would be a pointless exercise, but that in itself, I believe, is worth investigating. What say you? So, the console we seek lies on the far side of this aisle. Given the nature of the ground, the route may not be entirely direct as seems. Let us all watch our step as we make our way. Alright, to the south here. Yeah, that's some crazy stuff that's going on with the font, but I mean, it makes it makes sense. I mean, the character is basically losing the allies that they've had this whole time, uh, and it's becoming more and more corrupted as he loses his friends. Now, if that's going to make some sort of a fourth wall break towards the player at some point, we'll have to see. I mean, I suppose you could already say that there's a fourth wall break going on just by the fact that they changed the fonts there, but...
This appears to be the console. But it seems unresponsive. Would you care to take a look at it? If I had to guess, Garaha's probably going next. You try touching, smacking, and attuning with the console, but there's no response. No luck, I see. There must be a way to activate it. There must. <sighs> well, I'm out of ideas. Here's a question. Is there Sir still alive, in a sense? As am I. Operating such consoles is trying enough, but if we can't even activate it... Perhaps there is a way. First, consider the world that has been recreated here. Its inhabitants were machines who gathered combat data to enhance themselves. And among the many wars they waged, the most notable was that against the dragons. As you've doubtless surmised, I believe this was the homeworld of Omega. Indeed. Sid built a jamming device to defeat it, a device which generated massive bursts of lightning, its sole weakness. That's all well and good, but what does that... Wait, you're not thinking to strike the console with lightning, are you? <laughs> as a matter of fact, I am. Ask yourselves this. Why would an entity as puissant as Omega not be designed to suppress the effects of lightning? Because it relies upon it, or something akin to it, as a source of energy. My thoughts exactly. And there is a good chance the same is true of the Omicrons and their devices. So, shall I cast Caution to the Wind and try something reckless and dramatic? Go for it. <laughs> Do I still have that? Or I could use my custom-made Omega Jammer. Sid and Nero's legendary device which brought low the super weapon Omega. Wait, the actual device was much too big to lug around, so you must only have the control module. And there I was getting all excited. Ah. Never mind. An old fashioned spell will suffice. for you of late no mission orders have been issued why not has there been some manner of trouble reply the extended operations unit is yet to determine guidelines for future assignments all strategies are calculated devised and action in accordance with set guidelines in the interim all citizens are directed to maintain a state of combat readiness can you tell us why the extended operations unit hasn't yet determined the guidelines? Unable to comply. Information unavailable or access restricted. 
In that case, is it possible for us to communicate directly with the unit? Access denied. Unable to establish connection. Does the unit have a name? Is there anything you can tell us? Have there been any abnormalities, like a, a threat to the star or widespread unrest? Reply. Negative. All citizens continue to operate at maximum efficiency. If your operations are suboptimal, please proceed to a maintenance facility for evaluation. Otherwise, stand by at your designated post. End reply. End transmission. Closing connection. I could activate it again, but I doubt it would be productive. What do you think? If all the Omicrons really were running as efficiently as it claimed, then I doubt they were hoping for life here to end. As this sir told us, there just haven't been any new instructions, and everyone is standing by. So how do we fake new instructions? Should be standing by at any rate. If there are those that are neglecting their duties, perhaps we can glean a clue from them. I propose we take another look around and also try to find the operations unit. I keep thinking that I'll be able to just run off, but no, somebody's usually in front of me. Let us focus our search on the outpost. Elsa and I will try speaking with the Omicrons this time, in the hopes we might learn something new. Meanwhile, perhaps you and Graha could observe them from a distance. These beings are systematic and routine by nature. If there are any that aren't, it shouldn't be too difficult to spot them. If there are no questions, let us begin at once. As we came this way, I believe I spied a promising vantage point. Follow me. Alright, so we need to search for errant Omicrons. That's no Omicron! That's an Ambistoma, an especially lively one at that. Oh, so you're the new shoe bill of this expansion! Perhaps it's Snook aboard the Ragnarok, but however it came to be here, it seems to be completely in its element. The Omicron stands unmoving, the very picture of a unit on standby. Omicron wanders about ceaselessly, as if lacking a clear objective. So that one. An Omicron wandering aimlessly, where?
Aha, I see it. It's left the base. Let's follow it. Not here, but it definitely came this way. It must have used the portal. Time to go through and see what we find. Let's see what this one has to say. This is apparently called a tree of life here. What is your query? Ah, you found it. What are you doing here? Maybe, Rooks, we'll see. I am looking at the tree. Quite an unusual specimen. What is the device attached to it? The tree is a sample collected from another star. As it cannot survive in our environment, however, it requires life support. That is the function of the device. To go to such lengths to sustain it, is there something special about this tree? Being foreign matter, protocol requires that we study it. As this task has been completed, the specimen may be discarded. However, when I behold the tree, I am made to feel as though there is a problem. In order to become strong, we have continued to enhance ourselves, like we did countless others. We conquered the star whence this tree came. It is the last remnant of a dead world, and there is nothing towards which it may aspire. Yet it grows, extends its branches, sprouts leaves, produces seeds. Why does it seek to continue? Why was it made to behave in such a way, and to what end? I do not understand. I see. Out of curiosity, does this pertain to your duty? No, it does not. My apologies. I shall return to my designated post and assume a state of combat readiness. So it was acting outside of orders. 
Perhaps it is simply a malfunctioning Omicron. These are by no means uncommon. But it may also be a unit possessed of the ability to make decisions, one not unlike Sir. I believe this bears further investigation. To endeavor to live, even if we must depend on forces beyond our control. Tell me, Prince, one day, when this adventure becomes a part of your epic, do you think I will be mentioned in it? You're not here so you can be in a story. Forgive me. Let there be no doubt that fame and glory could not be further from my mind. And yet, I would be lying if I said that I don't relish the thought of my name being spoken in the same breath as yours. Well, we had best get on with our task. Tracking down Sir, and understanding the nature of the emotion which bars our way. We should return to the outpost for now. The others will wish to hear about the errant Omicron. Raha says you found a suspicious Omicron. That's good, because the units here were of no help. They all had the same thing to say about the Extended Operations Unit, that there's no way to arrange a direct meeting. Still, that served to prove that it's business as usual at the outpost. But enough about us. Tell me you learned something more useful. Omicron trying to make sense of the meaning of life. None of the others were even a fraction as philosophical. This unit may well be in a position of leadership, perhaps even one of those that comprise Sir. As we know, the Omicrons invade other stars and enhance themselves using the spoils of conquest. With the technology at their disposal, they should be able to alter their bodies, be it in part or in whole. Setting aside the question of motive, if Sir, for example, wished to have an ordinary Omicron's body, I see no reason why it would not be possible. The problem is how to go about ascertaining if that's what's happened. When I attempted to probe further, it promptly ended the conversation. If it is indeed Sir, I doubt it would willingly reveal its true identity. So talk to one body and to the uh, other thing at the same time. I have an idea. We use lightning on the console again, but we make it stronger, much stronger. At that moment, should the unit exhibit a reaction, that could suggest it has a connection to Sir. An inspired idea. I dare say it is worth a try. Basically the same idea I had, just a little different. I had a feeling you'd be on board. This time you must allow me to do the honors. I will stand guard in case your incantation draws sentries to the scene. 
For my part, then, I will approach our suspect and divert its attention. During which time, Prince, I want you to observe it closely for anomalous behavior. I should mention that shortly before you returned, an Omicron appeared from the same direction. Rather than entering the outpost, however, it headed off towards the console. At first I assumed it was a unit on patrol, but perhaps... That could be our errant Omicron. We must seek out and begin our operation at once. Alright, Alpha No and I will stand by at the console, and when it's time, I'll unleash a veritable storm. This will work, I'm sure of it. After all, our comrades are watching over us. Come, my friend, let us find this doubt-plagued Omicron. Let me pick up this uh, lookout spot first. All right. Yeah, the queue is probably going to be like this at least for the next week, I would probably say. Maybe a little bit less over time. You are the one that was observing the tree, are you not? Full glad am I to find you again. I have a question for you, you see, about the device which sustains the tree. Provided it does not necessitate the disclosure of restricted information very well. Gra has begun distracting Omicron. Soon Alice will strike the console with lightning. Observe M017 closely for anomalous behavior after Alize has cast her spell. Gotcha. Yeah, it kind of does, Rooks. Um, it's not like they could really instance this area very well. An anomaly, you say? Also, did... Did we just do a... Uh, did we just uh, point like a, like an attorney? Like an ace attorney? <laughs> Performing diagnostic, error confirmed. My connection to Central Command is suffering from intermittent failures. I must leave at once and present myself for maintenance at the nearest facility. You will excuse me. What you need, my friend, isn't maintenance. It is to confront the truth. While we spoke, our comrades struck the control used to communicate with Sir. That is the cause of your anomaly. You are connected to Sir, aren't you? Affirmative. To what end you sought to assert this fact, I do not know. But before we speak further, we must move away from the other units. I do not wish for them to know my true identity. Very well. Our friends are at the console. Let us head there.
capsulized. I am part of the shared intelligence of Stigma One. It is was my charge to determine the optimal path to achieving my prime function. This body had been abandoned by its former owner and lay unused. I took it and abandoned my own, and with it, my duty. May we ask why you did this? From what we gather, it seems to be a personal matter. Our kind did not always look as we do now. Long ago, we possessed frail and feeble bodies. Beleaguered by stronger races, our ancestors took to augmenting their flesh in order to defend themselves. What began with limited parts eventually spread to the whole body, and at last, a means was discovered to convert the mind into data, rendering even the brain obsolete. Such complete mechanical beings were called the Omicrons, and by their might, we came to reign supreme over the star. Even then, we did not feel secure, for we knew that the universe was home to civilizations aside from our own, civilizations that may be stronger still than us. Rather than risk becoming the subjugated, we chose to become the subjugator. We began our conquest of the stars that we might acquire the resources and knowledge we needed to reign supreme. We were successful in that endeavor. So powerful did we become, we could lay low even the mighty dragons. But then something unexpected happened. I began experiencing an error. I could no longer determine an optimal path. You were malfunctioning. I had performed numerous full system scans, each time finding no issues. Yet the error persisted. The error is that they are the strongest. There is nothing stronger to fight, to conquer. Or at least I think that's what it is. It was then that I speculated. What could happen if we grew so powerful as to have no equal? There we go. To become stronger was essential to our existence. Our every action has been in service to this objective. But if nothing lies beyond this, can it be truly said that it was a censure? Have we been engaging only in wanton destruction? You could find no threat to justify your purpose. The Omicrons will never leave this star. They will stand by until the reserves of energy are spent. For I have no path to offer them. None. It is not our place to pass judgment on the deeds of the Omicrons. But surely, this does not have to spell the end of your people. With your power and knowledge, the possibilities are endless. Why not seek out a new purpose? That is impossible. In the beginning, we had a higher purpose than our pursuit of power. But we lost sight of it when we so irrevocably altered our fundamental forms. When we cast aside our flesh, so too did we cast aside all that defined us. 
Nothing remains of whom we once were. I have no aspirations. No longer can I dream. The fighter's back is lost. Lost amidst circuitry and code and commands. Oh. I believe I know how to overcome this despair. The words are ready in my mind, but ere I speak them... It's his turn. I want you to make me a promise. Be it across time or space, our promises have always connected us. And so I ask that you indulge me once more, that this won't be the end. You say it, I'll do it. Is that so? In that case, I won't hold back. First, I want to visit Ishgard with you, properly. We scarcely had time to look around last time. I should like it very much if you could show me the sights. Next, you must regale me with your greatest adventures, in the places where you lived them, if possible. I may have read about all your deeds, but there is no substitute for a first-hand account. And last but not least, a new adventure together, unlike any we've experienced before. We'll travel the lands, cross the seas, and take to the skies upon the eternal wind, and it will be marvelous. It will. If you would humor me a moment, when we awaken each morning, how can we prove that we're the same individual who retired the night before? Through the remembrance of past events, we might say. We have our memories, yet there are times when we forget or recall incorrectly. What of our bodies, then? It is the same one, we might say, yet technically speaking, as living beings, our bodies are constantly changing. It will never be as it was at an earlier point in time. Our souls are no more immutable, on our star, people are known to inherit the souls of others, yet they are decidedly different beings. For my part, I've subjected my totality to much and more. I've made my body into an extension of a tower, blended my soul and memories with those of another self. And each time I would ask myself, what is it that makes me, me? Are you able to determine an answer? No. But that doesn't mean I'm confused. It simply means I'm the same as everyone else. So I posit this. Who we were need not prescribe what we now hold in our hearts. Whatever came before, what matters most is the present. For me, that is being here with my friends, full proud of how much we've grown together. So I urge you to not give up. Heed your heart's desire and hope that the future you long for shall be realized. I cannot. We cannot. 
We are not unlike you and I. I too have struggled to find the courage to express and embrace my wants. If you like, I will tell you a tale. A tale of a world on the brink. Of a people who never gave up on the future. Of a man who realized his grandest dreams and then awakened to a grander reality. He's gone. He created a path up. They all leave so easily, as if it's nothing. How do you think we feel? The next time we meet, I'll... I'll give him such a flick, and that'll be just a start. Alright, so we have lost a large portion of our team at this point. All we have left are Alze and Alphano. And with that... I need to take a break. I will be at, uh, I'll be back in about three to five minutes, and then we will see what lays ahead. Stick around, everyone. 